and welcome back to Blades in the Dark here at the Domain Gaming. Last time, the Imperative found their, themselves continuing the expunging of a group of acolytes, all of which had found to be dead and had continued their the ritual that they were involved with, even in death, confined to the, the space as spirits, a ritual which bound that of the entity of a horror to that particular location. Uh, however, a an encounter with the inquisitorial group that had been a, on a similar investigation had led to their summary execution of several of the residents in the vicinity, all of them refusing or unable to cooperate with the Inquisitor's demands. And it's shortly after that that we are going to we're going to rejoin squirrel momentarily as hastily making your way back to six towers almost those those gunshots still echoing in your mind and you're aware of the hiss of a stray alley cat the turning around you see said cat run across the street and the shadow of or the silhouette of a small figure evidently following you i think uh, square square will use her knowledge of six tower to try to lose whoever is staying there um, taking small streets um, trying to uh go into crowds Okay, uh, make, I'm going to say make, make me a check on that one. Okay. Um, did I did I lose her shit? Yep, I don't have spare shit anymore. Oh. Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. No, I don't know <laughs> that's, that's on me. It's, uh... gonna make a foul okay out sir stop Six. Oh. um so f following a less uh less traveled path um ducking through an old chain link, chain link fence, which has been partially cut open. And you, um, oh, sorry, one moment, um, apologies. So how badly are we going to make things blow up this time, guys? Big There's bang. always room for more boom. Yeah. That depends what the things are today. True. 
Couple of issues with that, and I just had delivery. Um, so, um, where were we? Yes, uh, yeah, ducking through a an old fence, and actually getting a line of sight on your would be pursuer who walks now rather aimlessly. You see that they're very short in stature, and as they step under a light, which flickers threatening to go out at any moment, you see a blood-spattered child, a girl, probably pre-teens, sort of stands uncertain of what to do, having just given her the slip. From where uh, I am, does she look normal, like uh, healthy uh, uh, or...? Absolutely, it's to roll back somewhat and play the events from her perspective. As that gunfire began, the last thing that happened was her mother used her as a human shield before collapsing on top of her. The sole survivor of the execution in the street. Doesn't look very dangerous or not at all. Just not at all. Nice. She's she looks lost now. Yeah, having having given her the slip, she's stood in the street looking up. Look, she looks up at the windows. I think we're seeing that she's just I mean, another girl. Probably is gonna approach her very very slowly. Uh, careful in case. Uh, she tr could still try try to attack her, but she as as you reemerge, she does her best, terrible best to hide. Sort of steps into this this doorway. You can still, and, and as you do as, as you do, you can still see her feet sticking out from beside the from behind the wall. Hello? You... I, I, I can... I can see... I can still see you, you know? Big shuffle backwards. <laughs> and that's, that's... That's way better. Side of the face kind of emerges. Eye appears around the wall too. You're still looking and quickly darts back. Can you tell me why you were following me? Don't really look. Like, looks like um, some kind of mugger. So. But that eye appears and actually holds your gaze for a moment and then I don't know are you lost? no bare face lie <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you want me to uh, take you back to your family if you have one? Or wherever you're staying? I mean, there's no shame in being a little bit confused of where, of where you are. It's a big city.
I, I, I can't, can't go. They're not there anymore. Oh, um, what? Come, come, come here. I'm not, not going to hurt you or anything. Come, come here. Just. Do you want um to tell me what happened? Maybe I maybe I can help. I I know lots of people. If you need a place to stay, I can show you one if you if you want. And then probably not not be very bothered by another girl. She at that she takes a few steps forward. Okay. Great. Um. Are you are you hungry? I I might still have uh some bread at my place. No. No. Okay. And as the two of you disappear into the rundown amongst the rundown alleyways just the occasional sound of a dog barking as we leave six towers and return to battered crow officer sasha wyatt and gaz colbert where are you at this this time? I feel like Battered Crow is going to be um, waist deep in the paperwork that that's going to require. And Officer Sasha is probably in the other side of the room, but also as deep in paperwork. <laughs> Like from what I recall last time around in downtime actions, I don't know if did either of you do the paperwork. Uh, that is what we are stating at this time is we are doing the paperwork for it. Um, okay. Um, if, so yes. In off downtime actions. Uh, Gaz got kicked out of the room for uh, mm -hmm. very much successfully indulging his vice of drinking to excess. So he's it's... currently just trying not to cause trouble somewhere else and wherever <laughs> we are. Just like a little stumbly, but mostly under control. Um... Okay, so... Um... Who's your vice purveyor? Uh... It is currently the Leaky Bucket Bar. Um, okay, so yes, in uh, the something of a neutral territory in, in Crow's Foot, the Switzerland of the district, and overseen by one Martin Gull, a former, uh, former leader of the Crows. And uh, the, the man in question is sort of older... Uh, he's got one milky white eye that uh, testimony to his time as uh, as quite a notorious figure however in in later years settling down and opening the leaky bucket as he uh, looks around and serves serves you another drink The other. He's just like pinching the bridge of his nose as he takes another swig, and he's like, "Man, oh, I'm starting to think it might have been way safer to just stay in prison." Ah, oh. 
Take it from me. Just drink away the pain. <laughs> Been there myself. Mm. I... No disrespect, but I doubt that. Uh, how much weird... Happenings go on at a bar like this. I'm not talking in, like, gang trouble. I'm talking, like, ghosts and specters. Not so much. We we'll get whispers in here from time to time. Mm. Not that I know anything about them. Gives you a wink in his good eye. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever heard of a warden in a blue coat working hand in hand on a case for an extended period of time? So let me tell you, it's not leading to good things. No. Once. Going back a bit. Bearing in mind that being a Crowsfoot native is again, Marden is one of those people who's probably seen you grow up. Mm -hmm. And it's the, uh... I wouldn't be surprised if you were too young to remember. It was... Something of a political move, but it did not. Don't it didn't end well, if I recall. Who ended up dead at the end of it? Blue coat. Although I believe that was voluntary. Necessary. Voluntary. Even. Necessary. Many for the few type of thing. How heroic. I seem to be empty. Another. It's the tap, fills it up, and it's... And as the... As the tank is placed again in front of you... Let's jump to Caroline, who emerges from a, a haze, a time spent in the uh, time spent in the ghost field. Time has has bled away while you've been here. And <laughs> why? And as you look, you see that there are pages surrounding you. Um, most of them torn out of other books, and large letters have been scribbled into them, and you realise that looking at them by a, by placing them together in a certain order you will get what you were you have been writing in the material world okay um can, can i try that absolutely um but yeah, make me a make me a check of some description, like Leah. A study or something like that. Um study Oh, I think so. Oh. As you place pieces next to each other, working out where pages cross over to one another. You realise that the... the issue that is currently going to be facing you is how do you compete against someone who can draw the future 
before it happens. Mm. While she's still in play, reaching the any kind of inner circle is going to be nigh on impossible. They'll always be one step ahead of you. The message in front of you, as it as you place the last piece down, reads. She, she is removed before this begins. As the that ghost field attuned mind begins to work and realizing that the means of getting to her is going to be through the ghost field itself, where time flows in a non-linear matter, future and past play out in conjunction with the present. I'd be needing uh, more expert on on this ID. Um, looking for um, some diverse point of view, maybe. Sorry, say that again. Um, Caroline is um, planning on getting more diverse uh, point of views on the on the map. Oh, okay, diverse. Part Sorry, I didn't catch the word. Uh, the ghost fields. Okay, um, as a few options spring to mind, those that are more intuitive when it comes to the nature of the realm of the dead. Uh, the Dimmer Sisters obviously being a prime example, but then those other those others that are involved and, of course, Flint. Really? Not him. Uh, let's call this guy a last resort. Uh, Unless I'd rather uh, consult with wardens before Flint. <laughs> and as the late hours of the night sink in, the streets quieten down, save for only the odd blue coat patrol making their way through those districts under strict quarantine and curfews. We're going to roll on to the next morning, where Upon regrouping the at the basement office space that you have, um, uh, Gaz certainly feeling the the night after uh, the morning after the night before, and Caroline with said papers of various books and ledgers, all of which have had these letters and partial words scrawled over them. As the four of you are now together. Gaz kind of looks over at Sasha and he's just really confused because he's like, I drink on the job and I get reprimanded. She disappears for weeks and we just pretend it didn't happen. <laughs> I was busy with uh, my own job, to be honest. Oh, o okay. That explains so much. Thank you. You know, um, sometimes uh, spirits need a little bit of help, and I uh, got caught into one of those cases that takes way too much time for what they are worth. No, 
Not my wheelhouse. Well, next time, if you can, to let us know where you disappear. I know uh -huh. how these things go, but you are being given an offer to chance. Don't throw that opportunity away. I do my best. Now, what is with the uh, tapestry of papers before us? Oh, yes, that. Um, I was trying to f uh, find a way to uh, catch. You remember the the seer I talk about, uh, the one who uh, used the the goats to paint a, a vision on my wall. I was trying to f uh, find something to uh, to catch her with. Uh, problem is catching someone who can see the future could be quite tricky. Um, and in, I came to think that maybe the ghost feel could be the answer. And I'd like uh, to have all of your opinion on that. Sure. You want our opinion on well, how to deal with a seer. Well, his I guess his let me must get be. out my college degree in uh, sight and future telling. Ah, of course, finally it gets put to use. <laughs> uh, Crow kind of shoots Baz a look. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Play nice. So, what have you learned so far? Do you know what any of this is kind of pointing to? He gestures at the wall of... Well, what I deduced was that um, she, she, she can't really see what's going to happen if I'm or somebody else is in the ghost field. Time is a um, bit weird there uh, basically a uh, past and future kind of merge so if I'm in the ghost field and I'm preparing um, a plan to get my hands on her she will have a hard time to <laughs> see that coming So your idea is that we attack her either while we're in the ghost field or we bring her into the ghost field? Yep, pretty much. So do we know the mechanics of what it looks like from like a normal person's side whenever a whisper enters the ghost field? Do they like physically disappear? Or do they just kind of um, mentally project themselves? It's it's through the the use of ghost doors. Now, uh, so this is essentially a temp, very temporary tear in existence. Uh, usually appears the way that the the mind translates it is a black void, which light wisps of light are kind of drawn into from around the edges. So, entering the ghost field and using the attune action are two very different things. Like, attune you could use tune. the attune to enter the ghost field, but not yes, all. Yes, it's uh, usually uh, attune you using it to see or interact with it. It's mm -hmm. that you're, uh, if you imagine a the idea of 
uh, to put it into kind of a modern context, it's like using a like the police using a black light at a crime scene uh, that you see things that aren't there, but they are. Mm-hmm. Whereas obviously stepping into it is a very very different matter in itself. So we, I'm not trying to be dismissive. Do we know where she is or where she is going to be at any point in the future? No. Okay. That's Again, the problem. Yes. You can recognize how it is hard to start a plan without either of those details. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That, that's the, the issue, actually. Uh, if I get too close to her, she, she sees that uh, and she moves. And I lose her again. So, if she has trouble seeing the ghost field, what about mm. entities native to it? Does she have have a harder time seeing what ghosts are going to do? Uh, that's something I would have to ask Lyle. <laughs> mm. um, the way she's doing the way she's doing her precognition is that she's probably she probably is very well attuned and can actually dis- decipher past from present from future, and what she is drawing is merely what she sees. So, so yes, you, I, I, of course, uh, of course, this is something that I tried and failed. Okay. So, here's a thought. And we bank on the fact that she can somewhat reliably predict the future. The city is mostly cordoned off into different districts because of the ongoing issues. Crow turns to Sasha. How likely is it that we can get the precincts to work with us? We have her on... We have them on high alert specifically looking for her. With how many checkpoints there are, that's going to restrict her movements considerably, if not completely, depending on where in the city she is. That could force her to bunker down in one location. Much easier to find something when it's not moving. It's not an immediate solution. It will still take vast amounts of time. But it will make it more plausible. Continues to stare at Sasha through the mask. I mean... That's doable. She's an important person to track down. I mean, do you know, have an extensive description of her this year if caroline oh yeah i i've seen her close i mean no eyes is generally a bit of a yeah <laughs> distinguishing <laughs> <laughs> am i remembering this wrong or weren't they a small child she's in her teens Oh, okay. They're still... Yeah, late teens, and... yeah. Yeah. And I'd say to... successfully uh, hid from authorities, she might have some help. So... Maybe going after uh, people she knows, and some of her... Uh, possible allies could be a good starting point where we are restraining her movement. Also, uh, 
At this point, Crow pauses in his speech as if he just realized something. We are supposed to coordinate with the Inquisition, are we not? Caroline, how much have you spoken about this to anybody where it could get back to the Inquisition's ears? We could send them on a wild goose chase looking for this one individual who is an important player. Save ourselves a lot of time and keep them out of our hair. Looking over at Sasha. I mean, besides Violet, I don't really talk to anyone alive, so... Uh, yeah, no one's... no, but what this? What do you think, Sasha? Two birds, one stone? We do risk... losing her to the Inquisition, however. It just depends on if that's an acceptable loss, because, well, we've seen their methods. So, yeah. <clears throat> that's... Do you think we could... happened after I left? The Inquisition drug everybody in the cordoned area out of their house, lined them up, and as much as the term execution might have been used, it was a butchery. Starting to think I should have punched that guy twice. At this point, Crow goes from looking at Sasha straight to Baz. Run that by me again. You what? I didn't say anything. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You do not get out of this one. Uh, after we were separated, I was in the basement with freaky rats. I got out and I wanted to meet up back with you guys. I headed back and I ran into a... He, he was an asshole, okay? I tried to go back and he was saying all this stuff about a curfew and I tried to show him my paper and then one thing led to another. I decked him uh, and ran past him. Um, what was it? He had like an eye patch or what? Yeah. I was like, yeah, he had, he had an eye patch and scar across his face. It seemed kind of menacing. This is quite awesome, to be honest. Thank you. I thought so as well. He was the one that pronounced the sentence and the punishment. So, if I were to make any sort of educated guess, he has some rank to him. Oh. Oh no. This is my fault. I know I know I should have waited for you to come out of that basement. I was the, I did punch the dude. It's my blame as well. So I see you're looking at me rather intent attentively there, Crow. You gonna serve me up on a platter now? The Wardens have no real desire to work with the Inquisition. There would be no benefit for anybody. To the matter at hand, I guess. You want to send the Inquisition looking for this seer? At least in the short term. 
an mm. olive branch that we can maybe manipulate to our own ends, as it were. And is there any way for us to um, keep an eye on what they are doing? I mean, the last thing I think we sh should want is uh, for them to kill the girl also, when she could have answers. Oh, worse. And that doesn't seem like uh, very uh, agreeable, though. There, there's one more important question before we involve the Inquisitors. How are we going to swing this to them? Are we going to go up to them and say, Hey, we've got a criminal that can see the future. Uh, we want you to look for her. Be careful, she's probably going to know you're coming. Or do we just give them the description and no more details about what she's capable of? It is not unknown, at least to those in authority, that this is not a natural happening. I am sure the Inquisition would be not as surprised as you might think that somebody of that nature would be involved in this. Much to your point, Caroline. We don't have a way to track them. This would mainly be a stalling tactic to keep them out of our hair. And presumably, with our inn at the Blue Coats, gives a quick glance over to Sasha they would be able to keep some track of... They're probably keeping some track of the Inquisition. Because I feel like having, what, 13 or so bodies on a scene raining down a hellfire of bullets, as it were, causes a precinct a lot of paperwork. However, we're wasting what little sunlight there is. So. That's sunlight, you've got roughly an hour at dawn and dusk. <laughs> oh, your camera just dropped. <laughs> That being said, it'll take time to set things up, so we know that this is a piece that needs to be removed from the board one way or another. Uh, how long has it been since the incident? The... Uh, uh, our last score, essentially. About a week? This is the... Um, this is the morning after. Okay. There is also the... What is the... What is the... Legal... Ah, person in custody that we took. Yeah, I don't know where I put him. I, The last I knew, I carried him out of the building. I'm not quite sure where that person ended up. Mind uh, uh, elucidating me live? Uh, that's... He is currently in... Um, oh, where should I put him? Uh, let's say uh, he's in the Barracleft precinct. 
there real quick before we move on completely do we think that the art scene is a potential way to narrow down the search for this seer as it seems her art is a passion and I doubt there are many blind artists kicking about, or do we think she is more secretive than that? To my very limited understanding, her art always had a purpose. Now, those that have purpose sometimes do like to share that purpose, but other times because it is something more personal, they do tend to keep it to themselves or give it to the individuals that they are about. And it's at this point, Crow kind of starts patting himself down, rifling through his coat, finds a crumpled up little piece of paper and kind of unfolds it and hands it over to uh, Caroline. Personal inquiry here. You've seen this person's artwork back when I was still part of the other crew. I met somebody that rambled on and on in confusing rhymes and riddles, it seemed like. Is this the same style of art? To my understanding, artists don't change their style all that much. Uh, is it the, the same yes. as? Yes. Yeah, uh, very much. Yeah, it, it does. Looks like what she does. This would have been... Can I... Proceed. Uh, sorry. Uh, and I agree with uh, with you on the on the matter of her sharing it, and I'm not sure anyone would be very comforted comfortable, um, you know, re renting her a gallery or or just selling what she what she drew. This and at this point, you know. Uh, Crow takes it and uh, shows it to the other two, not trying to hide anything. This would have been before, uh, to my understanding, she blinded herself, or was blinded. Oh. I have no information other than it was in Silkshore, right, Live? I believe so. It was in Silk Shore, but that means absolutely nothing. I thought it was something worth bringing up as the, uh, the macabre and dark seems to always attract its own crowd and all things art. So something as inane as a blind artist might have had whisperings at the collector world it's not impossible i would just keep low bets on it as it were fair enough fair enough crow goes over to the map where we, of course, have like two pins and a string, you know, <laughs> for the two locations that we've dealt with. Just two. We need. doesn't have very many conspiracies yet. There uh, are, of course, uh, like notes about the Inquisition, you know, scrawled on other pieces of paper around it. So, you know, there are a few things on the board. Not quite this uh, the scale of uh, sort of lunatic. Certain certain memes brings to mind. <laughs> well, I feel like it's time for us to 
start seeing where we need to head to next. I feel like focusing on somebody like that right now... Uh, dust in the wind, as it were. But definitely something we need to... Keep in mind for the future. As the crumpled artwork and such similar things are uh, placed onto the onto the onto the board as a point of reference. You have just finished listening to this week's episode of Blades in the Dark: What Happens in the Dusk. Part of the Domain Gaming, written and told by LifeSpark. A special thanks to you, the listener, and if you wish to continue supporting us, subscribe, like, and share. As always, comments are welcomed. Until the next chapter. You've heard the silent song. We all have the legend guesses. Some foolishness about a world as it was meant to be. A city of ghosts. An illusion that you can begin again. How much would you give for silence? <laughs>